Oh, yeah, we can see. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what we can see. <laughs> so I think we have just started our live streaming and we'll still wait for five more minutes uh, for people to join and then we will start off. Yeah. yeah. All right, we're going to go live in like three more minutes. I will still wait for a few more people to join. I know it looks like a long time waiting, but uh, yeah, let's start in the next three minutes.
Great. Thank you so much, everyone uh, who has been waiting for the panel discussion to start. Um, so welcome to another panel discussion of AppNotes. Uh, today, we're going to discuss more about fintech uh, companies. So uh, the topic is in fintech, we build trust and how our banking apps are at risk and how do fintech companies uh, you know, uh, mitigate these risks. Uh, welcome to another episode of final discussion on on these various security topics. We have, uh, I'm your uh, moderator and host, Chubo Halde. Uh, I'm the co-founder and CISO at AppNox. Uh, quick, a uh, little bit about me. So I have been uh, giving out, uh, you know, mobile security related trainings and programs in different uh, you know, uh, conferences such as Black Hat, RSS, Scan, And I've been uh, figuring out different security issues and loopholes in businesses like Google, Facebook, and Microsoft. Um, I have been running AppNox for the past decade. And what I focus on mainly is the security and technical aspect of the company. Along with me, I have uh, you know, Abul, uh, Majori, and Selena. So, uh, and and I would like to go ahead and introduce our panel to you guys. So, uh, Abul, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit? Uh, you know, he, he is the head of information security at Eastern Bank. Uh, Abul, please, the uh, table is yours. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Shubha, uh, for inviting me to the panel discussion. Uh, it's a great honor for me uh, to come into that and discuss. Let me introduce myself. Uh, myself, Abul Kalamajat. I am the head of information security for Eastern Bank. I actually look after overall information security, cyber security, and compliance related activity for my bank. And I do risk assessment for application and other server, anything which has a digital presence. And we have to look after also different compliance requirements like PCI DSS, ISO, and GDPR. So I have about uh, 15 years of working experience in IT security, cyber security, compliance, and IT audit related area. And I have um, total 20 years of working experience in different industry like healthcare, killers, government, all that. And I'm also a seasoned speaker into different cyber security conference in uh, country and abroad. So that's all about me. <laughs> Uh, let's have further discussion at the panel. Look forward. Thank you, Shubha. Thank you, Abul. Thank you so much for taking out your time and joining this panel discussion. It's a pleasure uh, for us to join this. Uh, thank you, Abul. We also have Majori, and uh, he's the co-founder and CEO of Alt Payment. Uh, Majori, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. So I'm Majori Labindao. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Alpaynet, and uh, my expertise is on um, security and infrastructure. So in fact, I have my certification as a CISM, a Certified Information Security Manager, and CVA, a Certified Vulnerability Assessor. And for infrastructure, I'm also a Certified um, AWS um, Associate uh, Architect. And um, for so Alpaynet uh, is a fintech company um, for the major services we have. We are also a card scheme acquirer for Diners Discover and China Union Pay International. We are also a payment uh, gateway technology provider. So we provide uh, white label solutions for those who are interested to be a third party payment processor. And we are also providing us a uh, software as a service developer or provider for those who are interested to uh, use our solutions. And um, we have um, recently, we have um, uh, launched our mobile banking solutions as well for, um, for uh, e-money. And uh, we have, of course, Alpaynet uh, grown its uh, network. We are located in Hong Kong, Philippines, Malta, USA, Malaysia, Australia, and recently we have UK. And Alpaynet is a PCI DSS uh, level one uh, certified company. We have licenses also to operate as a payment uh, operator uh, system in Philippines and Malaysia. And um, with regards to infrastructure, we are also a 
select partner for AWS, particularly for public sector. Yeah, so that's uh, that's uh, basically uh, the gist. So we founded the company in 2015. And thank you for the, the invitation at Atmos. Wow, that, that was great. Uh, and thank you so much for taking out your time and joining this kind of discussion. It's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we also have Selena working, and she is the section head of IT risk assessment at Agrobank. Uh, Selena, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hello. Um, if you can hear me, <laughs> sorry, what the yes. line is quite bad around here. All right, uh, my name is Selena. Actually, I'm from Agrobank Malaysia. Um, what I normally do, um, as a for, uh, experience of fourteen years, um, in um, not only in security but also in governance and also in risk. Um, what I what we normally do around here is uh, normally we look into um the regulatory requirement, um, not only from um, the Bank Negara locally, but also on the international matters, which is PCI DSS, and also um, a security commissioner. Um, our bank is basically performing, uh, provide loans to uh, agriculture uh, in Malaysia. And uh, we're also looking into sustainability, not only for the agriculture of Malaysia, but also on the third party and um, also in the cyberspace. So um, uh, I also actually write a few, few books, which is, um, a code of per, uh, code of conduct for Malaysia insurance, which is a PDPA, um, and I also wrote uh, for security governance on um, cyber awareness uh, or cyber attack, and recently we actually uh, write for um, carbon for third party cloud provider. So that's all for me. Thank you so much, Selena, for joining this, uh, taking out your time and joining this panel discussion. It's a pleasure having you here. Uh, thank you, everyone. Awesome. Uh, so uh, before I uh, dive into today's agenda of the panel discussion, uh, just a quick thing. All those who are watching us over social media channels, um, LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter, please go ahead and uh, put your question in the comment box or in the thread. Uh, we would take it up uh, by the end of the panel discussion and we'll try to ask this question uh, to the panelists. If you are joined, if you have joined through Zoom, please use the Q and A feature. Uh, we also have a poll, uh, uh, and uh, please go ahead and you know vote in that poll. Uh, that will help us to optimize our uh, discussion. Uh, please go ahead and do that. Uh, also, uh, we are going to keep this uh, a little bit time box so. If we couldn't answer your question, we'll try to get those questions and send it to our panelists and then get the answer and send it over to your email. So don't forget to come and register in the uh, in our webinar registration page. So, all right. So uh, let's uh, dive into the agenda. Uh, we are going to keep it very simple. Uh, we will just dive into some basic backing up vulnerabilities and then security risks, uh, which we have seen. Uh, some of the effective approaches to build trust among app users uh, and how to navigate regulatory requirements for secure banking app development because for banks regulations and compliances comes hand in hand um, and obviously to gain industry experts perspective on safeguarding user data so these are some of the pointers which we're going to cover in the agenda i'm going to quickly run through this uh, so the most important thing is trust and why trust is very important in FinTech. Just imagine a mobile device uh, having all your account and, and it's very personal to you. A, a mobile device is a very trustworthy device for you. If it's a laptop and uh, there is a way to log out and like, let's say if I want to log into my bank account and I can go into anybody's laptop and I can log in, right? But that's not true for mobile apps. Right, so I wouldn't give my phone to somebody else to log into their uh, banks, and there's that's a, there's a reason for that because mobile devices are considered a very personal device, and that is why applications such as banking application or fintech application needs to build the trust, and which is very important. 
So to build those trust, some of the key things which we look at are the data protection. Um, what are the regulatory compliances? Are we following compliance in a proper way? Uh, how can we increase consumer con confidence, right? Uh, I, and to hope that the reputation for the application is obviously a very, very important and obviously business sustainability uh, for the application, right? So, so these are a few of the important factors which we look at. Um, and what are the risks associated with banking apps? There's a lot of risk which we have seen in the past decade. Uh, we have done almost uh, almost uh, 300,000 uh, assessments and a few of the very common risks which we have seen are like data breaches happening or unauthorized accesses uh, into your uh, backend servers, uh, mobile device security, uh, weak authentication, and obviously transaction problems, right? So, so these are some of the very common risks which are uh, associated with banking apps. Um, and then if, if I go, uh, if, I, if I talk about what is the role of a fintech in mitigating these, these risks, you need to be using robust security measures, right? You need to uh, use various, uh, you know, various stages of software development lifecycle. You should have various security gates. Uh, you need to make sure that you're compliant with all of your compliances. You need to make sure that you have continuous monitoring built, right? And these are some of the very key role uh, in a fintech to mitigate the risks which we were talking about in the previous slide. Right. Um, just a pitch about Appnex. Uh, how do we come and help? So we are a plug and play mobile app security. So which what it means is you can just upload your application into your into your portal and via various stages of scan, such as static dynamic API, uh, we kind of figure out if there's any vulnerability or any security loophole which is open in, in your application, and we try to help developers and businesses fix those uh, issues as soon as possible. So, uh, so that's what uh, what Appnex does, right? Uh, so, and, and how does it do, uh, and how does all of this uh, fits into place? We do all of this automated vulnerability assessment in the next, in, in like 60 months, right? So it's very simple, you upload your application, we perform a vulnerability assessment as soon as possible, uh, and then we give you a detailed report with CVS scores. So, so that's how uh, it kind of all works out, right? If you have the customers with whom we are working with, um, their logos are here. Um, you know, we work with Shell, we uh, Singapore Airlines and more. Um, so yeah, so let's start the panel discussion. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that we can have everybody in the screen, all the panelists in the screen and we can have a discussion right then and there. So my first question uh, for the panel discussion uh, goes uh, goes to Selena. So, um, so Selena, if you can, uh, you know, uh, so this was in my mind while I was going through this. Like, what do you think? What are the three key security challenges faced by banking apps in the fintech industry today, according to you? Okay, based based on my experience. Um with this is more so really the fake application that basically spread among the public, which is in iOS, Apple, uh, Apple, Android, Google Play. This is the most main thing that always receive a complaint from customer. Um, um, another one is um, because of the cyber attacks is gaining more and more, the scammers or hackers basically prey the victim using a phishing by saying that, hey, you perform an OTP, you perform an activity, and we giving you a fake SMS, or, uh, which is a, a secure OTP saying that, hey, um, this is what you need to do. You need to provide us this by calling this number. So this is a normal common um, complaints from the customer. Um, and another one is we basically been um, request by our regulators to basically instead of um, multiple binding uh, multiple access to a device at home uh, bind it to one so uh, this is a basically the challenges that we need to do and uh, we may uh, in Malaysia there will be no more uh, link SMS OTP 
but there will be a soft OTP, which is a soft token will be provided, will be accessed by the web customer. So this is the main security challenges that the bank application have to change. So currently, um, what happened now, um, we basically are in the middle of enhancing our bank application. So these are basically the one that we are keep tracking on. So this is the main uh, security challenges that we are, I mean, happens right now because we need to educate our customer as well. So yeah, this is the main thing that happened to us. It's very interesting. And I, and I think this is, this is very similar to uh, the, the industry itself. It doesn't matter which geolocation it is because even in India or even in Southeast Asia, uh, I mean, you are based on Southeast Asia, but Middle East and, and others where we are, it's very similar on, on one of the attacks which you just mentioned. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go and ask, uh, you know, uh, Azad, wh what are the three measures should be taken to mitigate the risk associated with mobile banking apps, such as data breaches and account fraud or whatever Selena mentioned, right? What are the three measures you think should be taken to mitigate these risks? Yeah, uh, that's a very interesting thing. Like what we face in our life, mobile apps, everybody is using mobile apps and what type of vulnerability we really get. So that definitely database is one of the major area where everyone is suffering. Every bank, financial institute, fintech is suffering for the database. Another common area is um, unprivileged access or access, gaining access or privilege escalation, what we say. Like uh, someone is getting access, what he actually he is not authorized to do. So he can identify the loophole in the application and can log into the application and he can enter into the sensitive area of the application and then can uh, transmit data or it can do something malicious or it, they can do something fraud. So that is the thing, unauthorized access or escalation privilege, what we say, that's the common area. And definitely one of the majority already Selena mentioned like fake application. So people used to download <laughs> application which is actually not genuine fake. Like, Lots of website, Facebook, uh, different website, they offer that these mobile apps and rating is very good. So people understand this is the genuine website, legal website, or they identify that is the genuine apps. They download unlimitedly, they register, and they use an interview username, password. So using these fake apps, hacker identify, hacker gain the access or genuine credential from the user. After that, I can use this credential and log in into the original apps and do malicious activities with that. So I think these are the three areas where we definitely find lots of vulnerability and lots of interesting area. And that's the major what we found over the last few years. So there are lots of other um, area which we can, um, I guess other participants will be discussing. Yeah, thank you. Great. Um... Uh, I also have a question from Rahul uh, to you specifically. Is there any tool that helps us in identifying, uh, you know, security issues which, which you have been working on? You mentioned identifying mobile security issues. But yeah, I would just make it a little bit generic. Yeah, definitely. There are lots of tools uh, available, and uh, for to identify that type of vulnerability, that type of low rules in the real life. So there is like, a, a, you can mention you have a tools, uh, AppNox has a tools. I I personally use this for in the demo. And we have, a, I have used few other tools also uh, for assessing the application manager. So there are you know, lots of tools. And uh, main thing is manually, we cannot identify this this type of balance. It is impossible. We have tools. Well. We have to use the best tool to identify the recent vulnerability, otherwise we cannot detect the real time. And I think, Shubha, you can also add a few things because you are working in this particular area, so you can yeah. add a few more things, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think you are, you are right. It's it's not like one tool solve all, but there are multiple tools in, in the industry uh, which you need to use, right? Specifically for mobile apps, we, uh, I mean, AppNox is obviously there, but it's not only about that. You need to also have tools for fraud mitigation, you need to also have tools for, uh, you know, you need to have your stock set up, you need to have your assignment set up just to make sure that, you know, all of all of these, I mean, 
frauds will happen, things will happen, things will break. But there has to be a way to be notified users even before things happen, right? So that's at least that's what we aim for. So yeah, uh, that's that's. Uh, thank you so much, Abhi, for sharing your insights on that. But now, uh, now that we talked about various issues, various security issues, and various security things, various security vulnerabilities, and one of the major problem is why we try to solve these. It becomes uh, like the usability versus security becomes the debatable question, right? So my question to majority because uh, uh, my, my my question to you is how can banking apps ensure that security and privacy of customer data is intact while providing a seamless user experience? Because somewhat I feel that the user experience gets hampered when we try to introduce more secure practices of security. Like, I can't remember if you keep telling me to change password every seven days. It's really possible for me to remember password every seven days, right? I'm just giving an example, but my question to you is, how do we keep the user experience seamless while keeping care of, uh, you know, data security as well as uh, privacy? Yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. So generally, um, in order for um, us, right, to implement a secure a secure environment, we you have to start with um, security by design. So that means uh, we are taking into account security, um, not not necessarily um, 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 hampering the the. Ex the user experience, but usually uh, that's the case. But uh, nowadays, since um, the the cyber um, security incidents actually uh, is happening, and of course, um, um, users are aware of um, these incidents. So for sure, um, when you implement something like multi-factor authentication and so on, um, they are aware of uh, this implementation. So. Uh, the the users are uh, adapting on the side of the one implementing uh, mobile applications. Uh, they we just need to take into account uh, uh, how um, in terms of performance uh, while we are implementing the security by design, or even when we uh, of course we are I, we are looking at into two fronts. One is of course uh, security by design, and the second one is continually um, conduct a security assessment because from uh, third-party assessments like PCI DSS and other uh, relevant uh, certifications or testing in this case, like uh, what you are providing at Opnox, it would help us uh, to to actually um, ensure the the security posture of of um, the application. And I'm looking at it in three areas. One is, of course, uh, the environment wherein. Um, the handling of these services, like for example, the servers, uh, databases, storage, we have to take into account uh, the environment. The next thing is the since it is um, security by design, then likely we have to ensure uh, good secure coding guidelines uh, from the development and implementation itself. And then uh, lastly, of course, the, the security uh, application um, testing. And that means uh, we have to to check whether this there is a strong cryptography, uh, multi-factor authentication, or in terms of uh, authentication, authorization, um, sessions, uh, or even the device uh, devices that the user used and how it be able to make it seamless like um, automatic uh, detection. So in application of AI and uh, machine learning, I think it would uh, make uh, the experience of the user uh, seamless while uh, we do not um, compromise uh, security. Uh, that's how I look at it. I, I agree with you and, and secure by design or security while you are working on it. I think that's the best way to go forward with. Otherwise, if security was always an afterthought, I think then, uh, then it becomes clunky. Uh, if security is a you know, before thought and it's included by design, I think somewhere we can uh, you know, improve the user experience itself on, on itself. I, I completely agree with you. Yeah, actually, this should be the uh, principle. Like, uh, uh, security should be the inbuilt culture of application development. So, so that uh, before planning, we should to think about security. While designing, we should think about security during development, testing. So, if we can build security into our culture, that's why it comes 
AppSec development, right? Yeah. Uh, DevOps, yeah. uh, after the DevOps, DevSecOps, like uh, security is yeah. the part of application development uh, operation. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and I think that is a very important thing. And th th these are some of the terminology which you just mentioned, right? DevSecOps. Uh, and these are terminology which just got uh, like the last five years or, or a decade, these, uh, these term terminologies have come into place. But I think this is a good thing in terms of security because security was always thought to be a non-functional testing which happens after you know the QA is gone. Uh, but but now that we are including security more into the overall dev, DevOps or DevSecOps cycle, then that seems very interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, so all right. So uh, while you are talking about all of this, uh, uh, Selena, uh, I just wanted to understand from you. How can we collaborate? Uh, like, how how can collaboration between fintech companies, bank, and security solution providers strengthen the security posture of banking apps? Okay, um, based on our um, from my experience, a um, um, few months past um, on the collaboration of fintech and uh, all other security solutions. Whenever they came in uh, for the tender or whenever they want to promote something, we basically always advise them to basically master or understood um, the local co country, um, local regulation. Because of most of the time that they came in, they basically saying, "Oh, we are complying with um, ISO, mm -hmm. uh, PCI DSS." Uh, yeah, we get it. But do you understood the local regulatories? Because of sometimes that the data will be transferred um, from not only just one place, but also, but maybe uh, put it in, maybe in Singapore, maybe in Vietnam, or maybe in Japan. So we want to know how the data across borders will be taken care of. So normally we basically emphasize the regulatory requirement. And um, are they experienced in working with other banks, um, which is like, who emphasizes also pretty much similar, which is we will want to see, do you work with a local bank? If you don't work with a local bank, okay, do you work with a similar bank, which is like maybe in Singapore, which is emphasize um, security more on that matter. Um, and number two, which is, uh, do you really understand there is, there is an incident uh, locally that happened um, instead of internationally, maybe there is a website or, uh, you know, we just can tell you that, hey, there is an incident going on, um, which is uh, you need to be careful with. And, you know, maybe you hear a, a gossip or maybe, you know, there will be a whisper in the industry about the incident that happened in, in some other industry or some other company. So we um, appreciate if you understood that. We appreciate if you have that kind of knowledge so that you can help us to understand, to 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 how to say to mitigate or minimize the 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 uh, our find uh, our I don't know how to say our vulnerability and threat and which is it can also help us to understand where we can sort of of um innovate bit better. So this is the kind of thing that basically we emphasize on. Um, and we found that um it was a great help and um we don't mind the cost some sometimes but sometimes we do mind about the cost but we see if where we can see fit within like five or ten years kind of period so that's where normally we i think that the collaboration can be done in in that as i mean how to say in essence of it um but as a bank as a person who work in bank but that normally is a requirement for a bank so that's from my side yes selena i, I think that's the few of the good points which you brought out it's uh, are, are the regulations, right? Because with with banking industry, regulatory and banks goes hand in hand. And if if you are partnering up with any security solutions or, or, or in fact any vendors, uh, all of we need to make sure that all of these regulatory compliances are in place, are in check. And that also kind of helps you to reduce your risk of exposure and things like that. I completely agree with your point on, on that. And uh, I just want to continue with that point with uh, Azad, and I want to ask him, uh, like, how, how can regulatory compliance such, such as, uh, you know, PCI DSAs or, or even GDPR, for, in, uh, for the matter, be effectively addressed in banking app development? 
okay fine uh, so we have to remember one thing like uh, we always talk about compliance so compliance come from something minimum requirement like everybody says that everybody has to stay into that minimum round uh, like we consider PCIDSS, we consider GDPR, HIPAA, or many other complex. So, for in this particular specific industry, there are some specific requirements. Like, uh, let's we'll talk about PCIDS a little bit. Like, uh, while we're dealing with the card, we have to follow certain guidelines to protect the card information, to protect the breaching or protect the port, right? So, let's talk about the PCIDS. And PCIDSS has a control and they have a certain requirement so if we follow that that ensure at least you can protect your infrastructure from that type of fraud or that type of issue so that's why PCA VSS compliance comes so that is applicable for who follow the who do, do the business with the card so so it comes bank merchant or any other fintech company who actually will be connected with the bank or who will be the doing business with the card so that's why this compliance has to be enforced. So and everybody, as we want, like to discuss one more thing, like a payment ecosystem, right? As we fintech bank is connected, so we become part of ecosystem. So in the ecosystem, if any part is become affected, so whole part will be affected, right? Like in, if we consider our body, like my hand become affected, then I will be affected. My full body will be affected. Similar to the payment system. If any component or any partner in that payment system become affected, become attacked, then whole payment system, ecosystem will be collapsed. That's why to make it resilient, we have to follow certain compliance like PCI, DSL, GDPR, or we consider any other thing. So everybody has to follow this thing. Otherwise, we cannot protect from that. Like, as a bank, we are following PCI. Some merchant is connected to me. He is not following. Like he, whatever card data he is storing, he is not maintaining the encryption. He is not um, doing the masking. So any breach can be happen from that merchant part. So if the happen from the merchant side, ultimately bank will be losing. So that data from the customer, bank customer, or it can be from any fintech company. If the fintech company become hacked, ultimately system will be collapsed so that's why it's a uh, compliance comes and uh, everybody in the part of the ecosystem has to follow the compliance at least minimum level and if we can do better then it would definitely good for us and similarly the gdpr uh, it's uh, from european union and uh, we all know that it is part of the data privacy especially pii personally identifiable information so protect the personal information we have to follow gdpr so i think what we should to do if we follow compliance, at least we have to make it mandatory for all the partners into the ecosystem. Otherwise, we are not protected. Someone in the ecosystem is following and someone is not following. It doesn't make any sense. I agree. I agree. I completely agree with you. And uh, I, I like the fact that you mentioned that uh, compliance is the minimum set of rules and regulations which needs to be maintained across. Uh, otherwise, things are going to fall down. And that is so true when, when you think it in that direction. So I completely agree with you, Azara, on, 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 on that. And speaking of uh, this minimum set of rules, right, uh, in terms of regulations, but if I, if I translate it in terms, of, um, in, in terms of internal company, in terms of developers, I have a question for majority on, on that. So one uh, of what the things which... Uh, which we say, I mean, regulations and compliance are for businesses to follow. And that kind of trickles down to developers or technical team in terms of, uh, you know, secure coding practices or, or application security testing. So my question is, what are the best three practices for secure coding and application, and application security testing specific to banking apps? Yeah, yeah. so... Um, as I observe also with uh, regards to uh, data breaches, um, one of which that we can identify is um, security misconfiguration. Usually, um, the especially for infrastructure like S3, there are um, sometimes before um, they allow the, the client to actually configure themselves. But um, um, since there are many um, breaches happening uh, because of uh, none, 
configuration at all in terms of security. Um, aside, apart from the S3, one of which is, of course, uh, for example, Firebase. Because um, um, by default, uh, the, the client is not, um, I mean, it has no restriction at all. Uh, I mean, it can it is uh, open to the public, and if um, the configuration is not um, uh, being uh, done by the by the the team or uh, the implementer themselves, then there there will be of course a security breach. So I think um, based on uh, data, that's uh, what how I see it. So I can um, I can uh, say that it's one of the best practice that we uh, should do. Number two is. Um, vulnerable and outdated components. Um, one of uh, the reasons also in terms of um, how uh, breaches happens is because of um, outdated or probably because um, the security team uh, does not, um, it's not uh, also updated in terms of uh, vulnerabilities or CVEs and so on. Uh, so that's why um, the moment that um, a component is uh, actually uh, hackable, or probably vulnerable, then um, there is a potential of breach, and um, it happens. No, like for example, for Equifax, they uh, they were able to update their um, components, so that's why uh, breach happens. And um, lastly, is of course uh, cryptographic failures, or probably um, uh, there's disclosure in terms of sensitive data that uh, when uh, somebody or a, a threat actor would um, decompile applications, reverse engineer, or uh, we can say um, some. Uh, th there are, of course, uh, examples that um, uh, some developers leave uh, the credentials in a repository, for example. So yeah. I, I can say that the, the best practice it can be identified based on the breaches that we need to um, prioritize. And this is a part, of course, from authentication that is uh, on the user ends, authentication on the user ends, or even uh, uh, encryption of, uh, say, for example, um, in terms of transmission of data wherein it has to be encrypted and so on. But uh, usually, um, breaches happens because on the, on the management or even uh, applying security measures on the side of the development, on the side of um, the implementer themselves. Yeah, that's that's great to hear actually and your point number two regarding confidence right and that's very interesting because uh we at appnox we recently launched sbomb uh as a feature to actually figure out what are the components which are being used in your mobile apps and to check whether the component is vulnerable or outdated we recently launched this week itself and and while we were doing the research, the initial research of why do we want to bring this up, and we realized that this is something which is very, very kind of important. Um, uh, and uh, because this kind of affects your supply chain of your software development life cycle. So, uh, yeah, and then we realized that, but I'm, it's really glad to hear from you that this is one of those top three which you think uh, in secure coding design practices you need to keep in mind and you need to work on. And, uh, yeah, uh, that's pretty interesting. Thanks. Uh, awesome. So, uh, so I have a question for uh, probably uh, Azad. So, what are the two strategies which should be adopted to build customer trust in banking apps and ensure transparent communication regarding security measures are being communicated to users? Because one of, one of the major thing is. Uh, even after we put in all of these design practices, even after we put in secure coding practices and, and everything, at the end, the consumer is the one who's using the app, right? And if they're not convinced, and if, if, if you cannot build trust with them, then there is again a problem, right? So uh, how do you think you can uh, you know, build that trust? Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, these are of the ultimate consumer. So we have to build their trust. Whatever we develop, what we publish, they are the users. So we have to build their trust. And they should assure that this app is secure. Whatever activity they are doing, their app, each application, they should identify that is secure. So that's the first thing we have to do is the awareness, building the awareness and give them um, idea about how security actually works. And 
what is the security and they have to understand the user security is the shared responsibility not only the fintech companies responsibility like banks responsibility that is the shared responsibility like as a user i have my user id password and pin so as a user if i share my password and pin no organization is going to protect the users and nobody in this world secure coding practice or next generation firewall different monitoring cannot protect this thing so we have to as a user user has to understand and user has to admit that the security is the shared responsibility and they should identify where is the actual risk is there so if user can understand where is the risk exists then jointly user and organization can build their trust and so then user can identify so we are having lots of trust among us and we understand our responsibility and everybody is following their responsibility then only we can build this uh, a trust and we can protect each other so this is the one thing and for that thing definitely uh, fintech company uh, financial organization they should come for it because it doesn't have much idea about like you and we uh, community we can give to our community back this type of awareness like this webinar whatever we are doing we should uh, do this type of uh, the organization should do this type of awareness like uh, how can we protect uh, what uh, is our behavior should be like uh, regarding password regarding pin why how should we protect this thing what should we do like uh, while we download the apps from the website what should we check whether this apps is genuine apps or this is the fake app what we have to do if the hacker try to do social engineering through so facebook or any other different way to take the password so this type of awareness we should do more frequently and then user will be get more awareness and then user can understand what they should do that's why build can the trust and we can build that long trust and that will be the actually effective way to protect each other yeah i i i completely agree with you and security is a shared responsibility and that's that's very 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 important uh, it is not just the responsibility of the provider or uh, i mean service provider it's also a responsibility of the user and it needs to be a shared responsibility so somewhere service provider needs to give the ease of usage to the user so that they can also take care of the security in, in that way and i completely agree with you on that um yeah that's um, that's a great point so before i move on to ask few more questions uh, we are getting few more questions in the q and a box and we are also getting few more questions from the social media sites guys please keep the questions coming we are going to ask after so i have few questions let me ask these questions and then i'll go ahead and ask the questions you guys have asked them so yeah just be patient for probably five few more minutes right all right uh, okay so i'm i'm going to go to selena uh, and i i have a question to ask uh, so this is about how can organization proactively detect and respond to security incidents in real time to minimize the impact on banking apps and gain customer trust right um, yeah the most important thing um for us to basically being proactive um to avoid such uh, uh, disruption for our customer is monitoring 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 and awareness <laughs> these are yes. most um important so um the monitoring most of people will be asking um okay what kind of monitoring that we should put in place number one is the brand of your application you have to monitor the brand of your application regardless of um is either in um iOS Google Play or Android or even a website make sure that the your brand is always be monitored and because of we we have this kind of experience not only in banking but also in insurance um that some people will basically try to impersonate you um by saying that okay this is actually for example this is a a, a shell company saying that oh yeah we actually providing a, a gas uh, which lower price or maybe we provide services that which is does not exist in your official website so that's the reason why that to avoid a, a loss of trust from 
the client, our customer, or, or maybe a future investor or our current investor, we have to have this brand monitoring in place. That's number one. Number two is basically monitoring of, um, you know, some, some certain insurance. They basically monitor their own agent, whereby that... um. To, to ensure that the epic, uh, their insurance or their product to be to have sales, um, to make sure that all the information that we provided is not via pen or pencil, but also but by iPad, and also have a recognition of which is taking a photo of their yeah, customer together with the ID saying that yeah we purchase this customer purchased it as a proof of purchase of insurance, which is it was basically have been done for two three years ago in Malaysia. Um, as for um, um, as for the incident, we're basically monitoring via trade intel, uh, which is AH thirty four by seven, um, SOC team, which is the most important team ever, which is they are actually the one who actually track and monitor any cyber attack that coming to the co uh, to the company, which is either you are in bank or insurance or in a normal fintech company. Monitoring is a must because we want to avoid that um, you know the hacker coming in and stealing data from from our company, right? So SOC team are the most important thing. Um, another one that we basically fail to include um, actually, um, if you are in insurance or if you are in banking, we should also work together, collaborate with a call center department, um, digital banking team, which is most of cost. They're actually the first. Um, the of defense basically dealing with the customer who actually come and complain to them what's going on. So, which is the cost center department, digital banking, customer experience team. This is basically to improve and also initiate innovation um, to improve the current um, banking mobile to a better services to our customer. So that's normally the the, the thing that um, actually I, I experienced. And number two is to introduce a special features that notify the customers because we are binding to one device, right? So if there is another device have been introduced um, that using the customer information, then there is a notification informing them that, hey, your account has something wrong. So do you need us to block further? So this kind of notification needs to be done. Uh, here in Malaysia, there is a few banks have done that and uh, actually expanding more because of this actually a new features um, for some banks. So um, this kind of thing is actually doing a lot of some changes, a lot of some trend, I would say, it sort of revolutionized the mobile apps in, in Malaysia, especially for the banking area. So this is a basically our most of proactive things that currently progressively happen in Malaysia. So yeah, that's the one. That's for me. That, that's great to know actually. And then, and, and, uh... Yeah, so device binding is something which is very much possible for a mobile app, and you kind of device bind it, and uh, and you kind of do an active response to the user saying that hey, you know your account is being used somewhere else, or this is a new device. Do you want to block it, or do you want to add this device, delete the device, previous device, and this kind of helps the user to take security, you know, security decisions also, and kind of helps the shared security responsibilities between the users and, and the banking uh, sector, which is great. And I think that's that's a revolutionary thing which is happening and that's, that's really nice. And another revolutionary thing which is happening parallelly to that is the open banking system, the open APIs, uh, where you know the banks are trying to integrate with other small fintech players and you know letting them go ahead and do more services or value-added services around uh, around it, right? So uh, I have a question for Majority for that. So what are the two implications of open banking and EP integrations on the security of banking apps? Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, the adoption of open banking and API is, of course, revolutionary. It actually extends uh, services um, not only to the bank, but even uh, to uh, its partners, uh, especially, for example, for fintech industry. It allows us to uh, to participate in the, the value chain. And um, as a way, um, we, we can um, help and assist, uh, for example, for uh, and Dan, Dan Bank especially uh, in the philippines that's still uh, something that we we need to um to um address or even uh, work on as a nation right so uh, but um the implication for open banking and api integration though it is um, helpful um and revolutionary but uh, potentially um the exposure uh, also 
increases uh, for uh, any unauthorized um, or breach, for example, for credentials. So that's why uh, there should be a, a very extensive um, implementation in terms of um, connectivity uh, to ensure that uh, whatever the whatever the transaction uh, being um, conducted is actually valid or not. And another thing is um, since um, the it is revolutionary the scope in terms of how you'd be able to assess whether um, this is uh, this still uh, secure. So it it means uh, a lot of work. I mean, in terms of monitoring, ensuring that the third party uh, accessing uh, these um, functionalities or features uh, still uh, the valid um, connection. So in terms of work, it uh, it increases uh, for for the team. Yeah, I, I can figure it out. It does. It, it's a new new thing. The open banking and open EPM banks are opening it up to others. It's somewhere uh, you need to build that uh, also with your partner ecosystem. I, I completely agree with you. Um, all right. I, I think I've asked you enough questions, uh, but there are a few questions from our uh, you know viewers. Uh, I'll, I'll just go ahead and ask it. Uh, anybody can take this question up, right? So the first question that I have uh, is, are there tools that are going to identify non-genuine or let's say fake apps that are in the app store? Or do you have a, or rather let me, I don't know whether there are tools or not, but if there are, happy to hear, but are there, a, uh, let, let me rephrase this question and probably it'll be very beneficial for everyone. Is there a process to report fake apps probably? Or is there a process for you guys to actually go ahead and figure out that these apps are fake? And and do a take down or, or a take down request. Yeah. Okay. I'm taking this question because I have a few I, I have some experience with this thing. Like there are process and definitely this process has some tools. Uh, ultimately, uh, they are using lots of uh, thing inside of this. So uh, there are even separate company also they monitor. Mm, like uh, if you enlisted for the uh, takedown service or if you enlisted for that is called generally brand protection and dark web monitoring like that type of thing so so they monitor across the web and dark web what we see in general web and dark web for your company related information for your particular apps if you have any apps so they identify in the web, there is any fake apps in the name of your organization or the name of your company. So they identify and they do report. And in their identification, they definitely use lots of tools, lots of insight, and there are lots of manual activity. And that is a new area of work. So that definitely is there. So you can, anybody can use their service. And there are specialist organizations for that type of service. So if they can identify, then you can take the take down service uh, take down as a service uh, from that company or several companies so definitely there is a process so definitely that is the process and in that process tools is there okay that, that, that's great to hear actually so the, the keyword to search for is uh take down services and uh, and you mentioned brand abuse services like companies who are doing brand abuse uh prevention kind of services okay that's that's great uh, i have another question from the audience what are the basic security checklists uh when we go live with a mobile app uh, i can to? um i think i can have some suggestions uh, for the basic security checklist um although i'm very well in oriented in, with um with pci dss and um, they have uh, a checklist for uh, merchants. It's you can actually uh, you can actually run through it because uh, you you can uh, check your environment. I mentioned earlier about uh, services um, services uh, related to mobile um, or even uh, for for databases, servers, and so on. Uh, there's a, a checklist, um, We they call it SAQ. You can actually um, have um, an assessment yourselves. You can check it out and so on. Be though it is for merchants, but when um, they're talking about merchants, definitely you are processing um, information and uh, more, more of it, which like uh, 
personal information, PII, the personal identifiable uh, information, or even um, sensitive information like uh, payments if you are into payments. And um, one, of course, that you can, um, it would be easier for everyone is uh, to have uh, tools. Uh, there are a uh, lot of tools that you can utilize uh, from open source, uh, to to check your environment uh, and even um, for example for paid tools like uh, like what um, Appnox is actually um, providing, it will uh, fast track um, your uh, assessment. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I I completely agree. That's that's how to go forward with. You can use those tools or there are checklists. Uh, the uh, I'm sorry, you mentioned SAQ is the checklist. Uh, for the for the yeah. merchant for the merchant yeah, yeah. it's uh, 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 that yeah, is self-assessment questionnaire right mm -hmm. self-assessment yeah, self-assessment questionnaire right i, I like to add okay. one thing here like uh, osap owsp open web application project they provide comprehensive checklist for application testing right so and ultimately they are the non-profit organization they do as research on application security and every three years they published a top 10 mobile app security, uh, what are the threat and what should be the checklist. They have a very comprehensive, that is generic comprehensive list and worldwide it is very, very popular and uh, all the application develop they follow. And again is that and if we like to follow any particular compliance like what already Lavendo said that PCIDS said they have self-assessment questionnaire for application development. Like different compliance, they also have some sorts of questionnaires. So, I think um, like uh, if anybody can follow the open app post up OWSP questionnaire and checklist, they can get general idea. And after that, if they like to follow any particular compliance like PCI DSS and GDP, they can follow the self-assessment SAQ. So th both the combination can make them more resilient. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, uh, OS mobile top 10 is, uh, it, it's a very generic, but it is a very comprehensive tool. And I think if you do both OS Mobile Top 10 along with, uh, you know, SAQ, probably you are much better than the others who are there, right? So I think, yeah, that's 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 the way to go forward. Thank you so much for for the answers. Uh, oh, this this question is specific. I mean, directed at Selena, but feel free to add your comments, everyone else. So what would you advise uh, application developers to do uh, to ensure better mobile security for their clients? Okay. Um, for a, a better security, hold on, let me look back at the question there. All right. Yeah. Ensure better mobile security for their clients. Okay. Uh, there's a few things that, that, that can be covered either that you is good to you have to separate the two which is, is good to have or is actually can be sort of can be put into um, emergency okay um i go for the emergency part number one is to make sure that your application have been hardened um make sure that there is a security testing the most important thing is testing 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 and then after that awareness okay number one testing is normally a trust testing Stress testing is based on always on your risk appetite uh, basis. The basis of risk appetite will be how many of your customer complained about your application. Um, any regards of your application is either a, they cannot key in the data or they keep basically having an issue with the data that it may not be working or they, with, they believe that their, their data have been leaked. So you have to find that kind of um, improvement based on the risk appetite of that kind of complaint from the customer service or from the call center. Okay, number two is basically um, the complaints from where you post it online, which is Google Play, um, iOS, or um, you know Android. Uh, this is where you can see an improve based on the scenario within these two complaints, which is, we call it, for IT race, we call it a risk appetite. So um, based on that, uh, secure and enhance based on those complaints. And if uh, and then after that, basically, if there is a module, a new features that we wanted to try, make sure the broad perspective have to, to be in place. Number one, your dev, uh, your application team must think of um you know 
um, must sit down with the security um, on what is the most recent um, application have been hacked um, and, and to think about the best scenario uh, for them to test on all of this because of um, Normally, as for us, uh, as IT risk, we we basically when the, the when the application go live, we normally receive a complaint. We normally gather all the complaints from the call center customers experience that, that digital banking. What customer complaints are all about? And we found out that is basically is even um, the application thing not think about it. Or basically the application thing uh, it is not going to happen because of it's actually a small space of user will be using it don't don't think about that you have to how to exhaust all of the potential scenario that will be happening to your application because of cyber attack never rest <laughs> never rest for the weekend so <laughs> that is normally happening um and then um for the one that i said that um for the one that is good to have is basically make sure that whenever your your um, application go live, um, make sure there is a, another run of tests to be done, which is um, you hire a third party, or maybe you basically hire your own security team to perform a security testing, a cyber attack on your application. This is to see how durable is your application is, because of we don't want when the customer download the application and the application went down whenever they use it. So we don't want that to happen. So most of the most important thing is you have to test it even though it goes live. So some some business may have some issue not able to test even to go live. But before go live, make sure that um during the pre-production, before move to production, you have tested and also perform um, a, a, how to say penetration testing, um, uh, cyber attack testing on it, just to ensure that your application is durable enough to 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 face uh, how to say the public cyber attack out there. So that is normally what um, I suggest or recommend to do when I was uh, based on my experience. Yeah, th thank you, Selena, for that. Uh, to summarize your point, it's always test, test, and test, right? Uh, wh which I completely agree with because uh, one, one of the biggest problems with mobile apps and uh, to, is when it goes to the app store, right? There is no control over you. You cannot bring it back. Uh, like for a website, if there is a issue, let's say there is a SQL injection which comes in, you apply a patch and that's it, it goes away. But if a mobile app gets released in the app store with a vulnerability, just imagine uh, if somebody downloads it and does not upgrade the mobile app itself, it's out of your control. You just can't pull it back. And, and hence, testing is very, 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 very important at every step on that, at every step in your SDLC cycle. I completely agree. Um, I'm so sorry. Uh, we are kind of out of time. We are running two minutes uh, out of time. So I... I, uh, we do have a few more questions from social media, uh, but we can't take it right now. Uh, but uh, what we will uh, try to do is curate all of these questions and probably pass it on to you guys. You can add your own viewpoints. And then to everyone who have signed up for this webinar, uh, I mean, sorry, for this final discussion, we'll send out that and also the recording for this. So if unfortunately you join in the middle or if you have uh, or if you have to drop off in the middle, don't worry. We'll share this according with each and every one of you along with the questionnaires. And uh, I'll just uh, I'll just share our thank you screen uh, for everyone. And uh, thank you so much uh, for attending this uh, panel discussion. It was a very engaging discussion which I had between all of you. Uh, thank you so much for taking out your time. Thank you, everyone, the attendees and everybody looking at the social media also to take out your time and ask questions. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, there is a poll if you have joined via Zoom. Just make sure that you go to the poll and vote uh, vote for your or, or you know, select your options. Uh, thank you, everyone. Have a good day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, Azad. Bye, Majority. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.